crazy out there. Who flies? Yeah. It's played ever since I came in. It's I'm almost convinced. And a couple of times when they do the karate thing upstairs, it sounds like somebody's being killed. So if that happens, just be prepared for that. It's literally like 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 like. And I swear to God, it's not, I can't even make a lot of noise. Nobody's there. No, no, there's people. No, that that was happening. I'd be going up there with the whole ghost crew. Be like, what the hell's happening around here? Bring one of them. I'll call those taps people real quick, you know what I mean? Because you gotta come out of the tiger, whatever you're doing with that rotor rooter, you need to chill the hell out. We got something scary here. The one in New, uh, Bill New York. The one in New York holding up the fence. I'll tell him he's got the pierogi place still open, whatever we gotta do. Alright, so. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome back to NFG Podcast with Jay the Usual. It's Jay the Usual with NFG Podcast live at Soco Arts, Massachusetts at Ball River Mass for the fourth time. Uh, we're going to be doing a live podcast here every week for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to have some new venues that are going to be available for you. Oh, hi there, I didn't know this camera was on. We'll be right back. In a moment. So we're doing a photography lesson in the midst of all this uh, crazy snowstorms that are magical and popping on or nowhere. Uh, it's either that or I'm just not aware because I'm we're always freaking out with this, this ADHD and this whole new world, the new normal, a.k.a. which how, how many, what, what kind of mask do I put? Do, do I wear a Halloween mask at all times? Yes, of course. It's the only way I stay this gorgeous. But to talk a little bit more specifically about what we're doing here, okay, we're, we're doing bomb mask podcasts, we're showing off a bunch of art, tables that are flat white and have nothing on them. And the real point of this is so that we, we can kind of have a little bit of fun, talk about whatever it is that needs to be uh, spoken about in a way that is open and free, which is unfortunately lacking. And in a, I feel like in a system based on something like that, you can't have free speech, then we're kind of just going against what we believe in and kind of doesn't make any sense. We'll be running a, pho a photography course out of this, uh, this lab for the next few weeks as well that are uh, at first going to be just introductory courses, a meeting, intro, whatever you'd like to call it. And uh, this podcast is something that can go from location to location very quickly. So if anybody has any interest, maybe wants to do an interview or has something that they want to spotlight in the Bristol community area, or something that has to do with any of the topics we're talking about in any of our shows, make sure to message us. So now that we're past the bullshit, or the fun stuff, or however you consider it, because some people like to be controlled and told what to do, and I'm not really here to cater to that. I'm sort of here to mention what the fans want to talk about, and so far the fan list kind of goes like this. They want to talk about uh, Scroll the Troll and the Poultry Podcaster, which is a really incredible tale that I've, I've, I've told few people in public about this. And the few people that I have told have laughed, they've cried, some have run away. There's a lot of different reactions to the stories, and mine blown, exploded all over the place. So. We'll get into that in just a moment. Virus X is another big thing in the public eye right now, whether you believe in that sort of thing or not. Uh, it is something that's been talked about. So I looked into the science and read a bunch of medical journals because I just have time on my hands. Uh, we also are going to get into uh, some of the local art groups in the Bristol County uh, area and also some of the tourism uh, groups that are run locally. For some reason, Cambridge uh, was conversating with me on Facebook the other day about some sort of photograph. I've never been to Cambridge. So, uh, that will definitely be something we'll get more into as uh, I think Wednesday's show will, will provide. And we'll be sharing all these episodes about one week to two weeks past uh, whenever we record these live shows. So you can always watch. Those will be for free when they're up. To come and visit, we'll have a door charge uh, so you can come and see. Uh, and also, it kind of acts as like a fundraising thing for our podcast because you know the more we grow, the more we show. The more you view, the more we do. The more you know. <laughs> so what we were going to do today, we were actually expecting a lot more people, but after I have a conversation with Tony Petrarca about how exactly we post what's going to happen in the weather and when, because this is the second time I've had a show where all of a sudden snow pops up. And who am I going to get upset at but the weatherman? Father Winter? I don't know. So we got to have a conversation. Unless they're changing the weather on us, it's something else. Blame, blame this, they, you got to blame somebody for one, two. They are messing with the uh, the atmosphere. The White House actually tried to pass some legislation. Uh, this might be uh, something you're not aware of, so that way they could actually change the atmosphere itself of the entire Earth, so that way they wouldn't have to create some sort of sun shield in order to manipulate the climate at will, region to region, so that way they could affect things like growth of uh, agriculture, uh, things like flood regions that get hit in particular areas. 
Uh, I mean, they already kind of do this in small scale, both in the U.S., China, and other countries, especially Mexico has a big startup that they're, uh, they were supposed to be contracted by the White House to do this. Um, and I believe it's with some sort of powder, uh, I forget the name, it's silicone dioxide or something like that, but they're also using a sulfur dioxide, uh, and that's sp uh, specifically the one in Mexico. But we'll get the details on that uh, if we ever have a podcast strictly about it. Uh, in the meantime, you can research whatever it is that we talk about on this show. Uh, if there's any question as to where the source came from, I'll post that in the comments below on each episode. Uh, so, we're also going to talk about Westport and New Bedford, Massachusetts, which, which are two places I'd really like to perform. <coughs> Westport specifically, we're actually going to be shooting a lot of the photography uh, tours and courses, uh, because you know photography happens in places other than studios. Uh, for those models and actors out there that never get out and go places. But uh, the problem I have with those two areas, and we've mentioned this before in the last podcast, and, and you know maybe some people in the crowd can uh, relate to this, we have <coughs> no shitters and no parking. And I don't know if that's like, you know, meant to be, so it's like you can't park, you can't shit. I think the change is after 9 o'clock or something. What, parking uh, anywhere? Yeah, I'll just... park, yeah, I'll park yeah. Oh! I still want to get out of the tag. At um, Westport. Westport Beaches and uh, one. It's open later, so. The one we were we were speaking about specifically was the Nubble uh, in Westport, Massachusetts. It's a beautiful area, uh, but the parking situation there is unfortunately very very tenuous. They literally change signs day to day, and they have council meetings that change these things, including regulations month to month. So you never really know what you're going to drive up on, and it's kind of. Uh, it's difficult because I focus mainly on astrophotography when I have my nights free. And when I go to do that in Westport or any, any region where I'm not really familiar with the parking situation, it becomes difficult. It becomes even more so when you're not even sure if you're going to get uh, ticketed $300 in a place that you used to park a few weeks back. So uh, that's something I'd really like to talk with people about and discuss. Uh, the bathrooms is another thing entirely because I cannot go to a place where it's like you have a whole bunch of humans, like regulated stuff, you can't park here, you can't eat here, you can't be here, but you also can't poo or pee here, and there are parts of this podcast where I literally have to be careful if, if I'm saying piss or shit or pee or poop, because certain apps now control what you, what you say. In fact, the most famous uh, out of all, the most popular TikTok, is uh, literally giving lifetime bans for things like cuss words, or even words that are triggering. And somehow that's more popular than things like free speech. I understand if the like the Rumble app is kind of like buggy, but I mean to have that is a little bit like I don't know. I don't know how exactly you get away with that. I mean I guess it has to do with this like short time frames, whatever. People have 30 seconds to pay attention before. Whoa, something else is happening. Gotta be scared. Gotta be gotta be working really hard. And not getting paid as much as what you deserve. And uh, that that to me feels like. It's something that should change. So, and the only way to change it is to talk about it a little bit in an open and honest way instead of just being told that's what's happening and just agreeing with it or dealing with it and shutting up, which sucks. Um, okay, so now we've got a few more stories that we're going to chat about, which are a little more fun, at, at least uh, here, not to live through. So, uh, scroll the troll in the Paltry Podcast. So we'll start with that because everyone's been waiting for that for a really long time. I'm going to share this to everybody that I know. And we'll talk about it a little bit more too, because it's not. I don't know if I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, Scroll the troll is not just one story. It's actually a, like a set of scrolls, and I, I found them all. I well, finally. He works in three different places. No. Well, no, I certainly hope not, because if you find that out. Three <laughs> this is going to be a mission, folks, because I actually <laughs> found a <laughs> mythical piece, an actual that. monster, and I'm here to reveal that monster to the world. And I was really hoping we'd have more real people here because I think that he's actually somehow digitally connected to the, the, the mainframe of the Matrix. And he's the only reason that I, like, weird weather's happening. He's, like, sending rockets up with, like, nukes and shit. And he's, like, you know, whatever, he's, whatever he has to do so I don't tell this tale because it's a dangerous story. I mean, all right, so, so basically what happens, right, is I start doing my part-time work other than podcasting to try to fit in all this stuff. Now I get ulcers. I get this weird-ass version of COVID where now I'm half deaf. I get hit with stuff every once in a while, and I guess it's just because I attract love from all good places. But I went to one place that has reminded me of all the darkest places I've ever been. Now, I can't give the name to this place. All I can say is that it's a supermarket, and some people may know it. I'm not sure if they do. If you do, or if you figure it out, you know, 
do whatever you have to. Share sure. it. Yeah, we were going to, you can share this podcast to the world, but I don't know if it's going to make a difference. But you're going to want to, I promise you that. So I entered this dark, dark facility. And it reminded me of all the darkest parts of my past because I, you know, since 14 years old, I've been working in places that everything was questionable. And of course, I had no choice because I was always on the brink of not having shit, like my freedom, you know, things that are important to some people. And that, uh, that, that's actually kind of why I do photography to get out and get out and do things, uh, especially recently uh, when, the, when the whole COVID thing, lockdowns uh, came up. I actually nabbed up a bunch of uh, drone stuff, pilot's license and then cameras, and started doing the podcasting thing a little bit before that, but never took it seriously. And that's when I started, but that's when things got banned. But I have a feeling that the curse of, of Squirrel the Troll is part of why things happened the way they did, because it was right around that time after I got hit by a truck, which no one's really sure if, who it was or why. There were cameras everywhere. Nobody could investigate. Very scary stuff, because you don't know if it's because you're saying something or because you're banging somebody's wife or... Whatever the hell it is that you happen to get into in your life. It could be just somebody driving around doing, uh, doing crazy shit in the middle of 5 in the morning for some reason. And they hit somebody and drive off. And everybody's like, well, I can't really care about that. Because leather jackets, helmets, and, and skateboards really scare me. But it should scare somebody that somebody like that is still out there. But scroll the trolls even scary. I'd rather actually have to be on a skateboard on the same road as somebody that's in that truck that just hit me. Than I'd rather be in a bathroom we scroll the troll again. That's right, I was in, the, I was in a, a gentleman's bathroom with this guy. And I'm not talking like one of the group ones where you go to a mall and you like, you know, you feel somewhat comfortable and safe. This is, oh, this is, like this studio it says it's a safe place. If scroll the troll's outside, no it isn't. If he's in your restroom, it's even less so. Okay, now, now I had heard rumors. I heard rumors that this, a, a, a person that cleans up the facilities there had worked in separate facilities that I'd worked at in the past, but I, it was just at different time frames. And he had been caught doing some questionable things, such as putting cameras in toilets and uh, leaving doors unlocked so that way unwary people could come into the bathroom and catch him doing whatever it is he's doing in there. Uh, magical, dark, voodoo spells or showing people uh, things that they don't ever need to see. Yeah, so I relaxed, you know, because nothing really happened to me. I was in there for a few weeks and, I'm, you know, I'm not... I'm as innocent as can be when it comes to magical creatures and all this. I don't know. I've never seen a unicorn. And then when they said they found one, it was a deer with a, with a sideways horn in China. And I'm like, well, what the hell is there to believe anymore? So as I'm sitting there looking for unicorns and aliens and shit, and I'm walking into this restroom thinking to myself, well, I'm just going to have myself a delightful break from all of the monotony of this crazy supermarket life. What do I see before me? Not but all of the crazy things in this world that I've seen. Is this the craziest? And I've seen a literal moon on fire break through our atmosphere with my eyes. I literally see this gentleman slash monster, whatever it is that it happens to be, because I stopped questioning myself about it right after I seen it, a blackout, and then I remember it again. I wrote it down this time. He's literally got his, his <laughs> he's got what would have to be called his, his flesh cane, or whatever kind of monstrous piece he's got on him, flayed over his Lay right over his wrist, as if he's like, well, check out this brand new watch that we have from, you know, from our, my sick monstrous brand. And, you know, this may be no F's given podcast, but this does make me uncomfortable to talk about because I'm, 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 a straight, I'm a straight gentleman, okay? And I'm also not into seeing, like, those half people, half, like, animals or, like, the furries and shit. Or, like, you know, I don't mind somebody that's in a hot costume. Don't get me wrong. Hey, chicks, follow me. What's going on? But... A hot nurse outfit is a far reach from an actual monstrous troll that's draping his man junk over his wrist. So I'm sorry, but this has nothing to do with inclusion. This has to do with me seeing somebody checking his pulse the wrong way. And he, this isn't what's most disturbing to me, because it's like, oh, it could be an accident. The guy even has hearing aids in. And I'm partially deaf now, so now I get to live part of that misery, right? And I'm starting to understand it. I used to actually take deaf studies in college and learn sign language, and this is just like a happenstance thing, which is really odd. But... He turns to me, right, and instead of apologizing, because I, I, I knocked on the door three times, like, like uh, you know, you're in a place where a lot of old people work, a supermarket early in the morning. I'm knocking several times to make sure whoever's in there can hear me. I'm shaking the walls, and this isn't like an exaggeration. The, it, the walls just shake. It's crazy. It's loud, but I'm, I'm hitting as hard as I can. I go, hello? Nothing. It's dead silence. I knock again. Hello? Anybody in there? Nothing. So then I open the door and I step into the, into the room and the door almost closes on me. I step really back, like, like back super fast and caught the door because it's all I saw was that sight. But then 
he turns and looks at me, and I've never been like, I've never been scared of anybody shorter than me. I don't know exactly like if it's because nobody's been like buffer than me that's been shorter than me that I know or something. I don't know. But he turned around at like five foot and he went. And at that fucking moment, for the first time in my life, I almost ran from somebody that could have been a dwarf or a, or a little person. And this is something that has been a constant thing that we've talked about on the podcast of like, well, is it okay for somebody of a regular height to fight somebody or, or attack somebody, like not like attack them, but like defend yourself in a, in a physical manner from somebody that is shorter than you, legally, like a dwarf or a little person. Because on this, uh, this curious case of Natalia Grace show, the, the parents were trying to claim that a, a, a person that's like two feet tall was dragging her to an electric fence to kill her, which if she touches the electric fence, they're both gonna die. So it doesn't make any sense, but the cops and the EMTs went, it could be. And I'm sitting there questioning, so it's like, well, what, what is my reality exactly? Is it, is it something that I'm being told, something that I'm seeing? Because it's like, why did he roar at me? And I have nothing to say beyond that in an ex explanation of what it is that I saw. Because later on, as I had to continue working at this place, he's just looking at me from a distance under his eyes. I'm telling management nobody gives a shit. Yeah. And, and, this, and this is not the first crazy thing that I've seen where the person didn't get fired for this sort of shit. I mean, we're talking every level of craziness that you have ever seen in any like little restaurant, fast food place, uh, a supermarket. I mean, you thought it was bad when during the, the lockdowns people were peeling off ice cream tops and then licking it and then giving it back to the, like putting it back in, in the store and shit. It's like, if I remember correctly, they labeled that shit as assault. And it's, if that's still the case, we're talking about some heavy crimes here. And, and these are people still walking the streets to this day that other people who are supposed to be liable have been told, hey, listen, I need to make a living. Can you handle this monster, please? And they're sitting there going, you may want to get some holy water because I'm about to tell you, go fuck yourself. So, at no fucks given, I have, to, I have to try to stress that, like, we're constantly in different places. We're, we're constantly on the road. So I'm thinking one of, of three things. One, uh, there are some extra sounds you're going to hear in the podcast today. I apologize for that. I'll try to edit out as much as I can. Second, uh, I've been to so many different places that we've had uh, experiences like this, let's say, like something unbelievable until you actually have evidence of it, <laughs> that it, it, it begs like me, like, oh, am I a little bit anxious about sometimes going out to places? Of course. But being the photographer that I am, which, you know, you, some people do just buy a Sony just to be like, I've got a Sony, it's a A7 III, it's, it's pretty nice, I gotta say, but I don't really take it out that much. It's probably got dust on if I traded it in for something newer. It's like, I don't really care if you just have a phone and you're using that and taking pictures. If that's something that you take seriously and you are giving your all and you're trying to like make something of it, that should be something that people are willing to foster and, and help out if they can. So a place like Soko Arts Lab is somewhere where you might want to visit, and I'll be, like I said, we'll be spotlighting stuff like that on our show as we continue. But we're also going to be telling more fun stories, uh, things that you're going to be hearing in the public that I feel like beg more explanation than what you're actually being given. Now, I don't think everybody has the time of day to sit there watching a bunch of shows and podcasts and doing research in medical journals and, and reading why the military is saying one thing and MIT is doing another. And I, I got to sit there photographing Aurora in the middle of the night, and I'm going, I don't remember hearing about this. And then the next day, oh, they're actually everywhere. And it's like, well, are we a solar maximum, solar minimum? Am I supposed to be concerned? Why the hell is this place uh, in Alaska that's uh, run by our, I believe it's our military, but it's some sort of energy sector group in the United States that actually turned the air green all the air, everywhere, for 300 miles around their facility for three to ten days this month, uh, what was it, uh, two months ago? And this was posted publicly so that way they didn't scare the shit out of people that lived nearby. Now, what exactly kind of experiment is that running? Uh, what is it doing? Why is that happening? Uh, those are things that are actually classified you're not allowed to know unless you research enough to find out yourself. So, we're here to talk about it because if you're going to affect people like this with things like, well, did, it get, did a virus get out from a lab? Is it, is it maybe causing a lot of your medical maladies? Should you maybe take this shot and then be forced to take it and then not be forced to take it and then question why everybody's dying or being crippled? You know, I noticed for a long time a lot of people were just talking about deaths and deaths and deaths when people were getting sick with a whole bunch of different shit, whether it be COVID, pneumonias, 
Um, we, uh, we ran across a few mutations of both, and then of course they had to talk about the lab viruses such as virus X, avian flu, and all this other stuff. A lot of it is based off of research that was done right in Massachusetts, and a lot of people from Massachusetts aren't even aware of such a thing. University of Dartmouth was researching uh, the viruses that they had to reclaim in Ukraine uh, with this war that a lot of people aren't aware of that actually chase specific genetics and are capable of changing your genetics over time through RNA replication. And this isn't something that happens right away. You have to get consecutive infections in order for this to occur, which makes it very difficult to prove, which is a perfect lab-made weapon. You slowly cripple a population until they have no capability to defend themselves and their minds may be so affected by the inflammation of the viruses that they gradually get and don't even notice uh, makes it so you're, you may not even be mentally aware that anything's happening to you at all. And you could have a whole invasion and a bunch of brain dead zombies walking around thinking they're still watching YouTube's NFG podcast with Jay the Usual. Make sure to share, like, and comment. The more we grow, the more we show, the more you view, the more you do. So, we were going to have a little lesson today. 